volatility and uncertainty is the order of the day. In fact, it has been so much that every commodity or every asset class has been extremely volatile under the given circumstances. Now, the biggest question among the MFDs is how do we manage such un uncharted territories and uncertain times? How do we manage the volatility and provide the investors a fantastic experience of what we have to offer to understand about how do we sail through these tough times and to understand how to negotiate volatility. Here we have with us Mr. Chandresh Nigam, CEO of Access Mutual Fund. He has consented to give insights on this wonderful and very, very useful topic. So friends, please pay attention, stay with us for the next uh, half an hour or so and have this wonderful presentation grasp okay don't go back anywhere stay there Hello everyone, good evening. It's uh, wonderful to be here at this event of IFA Galaxy. Uh, uh, thanks for having me and uh, also allowing me to talk about things which are very close to my heart. As you all know, uh, I do come with an investment background, uh, but uh, always love to talk about things which can do uh, on products and strategies and approaches which will work, uh, which I think are important and will work for our investors and customers. But let me start off uh, with the theme of the conference. I think uh, I was very happy when I saw uh, IFA Galaxy come out with the theme of conviction, collaboration, and consolidation. And I'll tell you why I was so happy. I think, uh, I think this is one theme which kind of aligns all of us together. At the end of the day, why are we in this business? What is the purpose of an asset management company? What is the purpose of an advisor, an intermediary, a distributor? Ultimately, we are all doing this to really make the life of our customer investor uh, really happy and nice. And in that bargain to do that, I think the one word which we all need to uh, always remember is the alignment the alignment between a customer's interests and what is good for him, alignment between uh, with the advisor and how he interacts with the customer, the service he provides, the understanding uh, which is there. And it's in some sense encapsulated with the entire word collaboration. And at the end, obviously, is the conviction which comes from an asset management company's products that we do things which are right uh, from a customer's perspective. So the conviction that we as an asset management industry have the right products for the customer, I think is there. Sometimes we may have too many products, uh, which may make things a little confusing for investors, but without a doubt, looking at the overall macro conditions, uh, the long-term possibilities and potential of the Indian economy, et cetera, I think there is no doubt in my mind and there is full conviction that we have the right products uh, to serve our customers' needs. The industry has also come a long way in terms of working together, collaborating and uh, taking out these strategies. Uh, and it's been a two-way con conversation, communication with asset management companies uh, saying these are the kind of strategies they think are right. And then there is a touchstone of the market and the market giving feedback and saying what is easy to understand, what is long-term sustainable. And then hence, uh, getting the right product in the right manner, getting the right transaction platforms, everything. I think there's been a phenomenal amount of collaboration which has been there with all, amongst all the participants in this industry, including regulators, et cetera, to eventually work into the benefit of the uh, customer. 
the last piece on consolidation and i think there is some work which we as an industry need to do there uh give you an example i mentioned about the plethora of choices and points which an investor has and some of our surveys themselves talk about that many people or many of our investors don't really know uh probably they know the fund house what fund they have owned but they probably don't know uh, the specific fund they may have invested in and forget about whether they knowing what exactly is the underlying investment strategy or positioning of that particular product so if that is the situation then what do we anyway have uh, no need to do as an industry uh, there is no point in putting too much jargon and be confusing investors with so many products we just have to change uh, the way uh, we approach this business keep the customer at the heart of all our conversation and communication because too much of technical stuff and all that will overwhelm him and in some cases actually uh, drive him away from the industry and that's why this whole issue of alignment becomes very important if we start with customer's interest and what he really needs then we can articulate some kind of a solution which ties in with the theme of consolidation there is no need for an investor to have 10 15 20 different products we don't have to sell him piecemeal product by product from some amc or the other amc what is needed by the customer is a complete solution a complete portfolio and that consolidation can be done in many ways i'm sure many of you are aware of that the things happening on the multi asset classes etc but the whole idea is <clears throat> we should be able to consolidate an investor's portfolio in line with his needs many a time what we are seeing is uh, that a customer and some of the customers i have come across have 15 20 25 funds in their portfolios and with no real understanding of what each one is doing and what is going to happen now also i want to tie it up with one more thing and this is the whole experience which people are getting used to in the uh, let's say overall economy and that is about customization and personalization uh, people are today more uh, used to seeing things which are served out to them on fintech platforms or e-commerce websites things which they are more <clears throat> which are more relevant to them that makes for more engaging uh, conversation or communication between uh, with, with between business people and consumers and customers and we are seeing that there is some level of success which is being achieved because of the availability of technology people are able to store information about customers they are able to understand what their uh, likes dislikes are and able to serve things which are more relevant uh, uh, for for those customers <coughs> and technology is making all that available so we as an industry should also uh, look at some of these things uh, evaluate how we can understand customers better really understand their needs and then serve them sim- simple solutions uh, which will really make them more engaged with the industry they will be a lot more happier and uh, over a period of time we can have a really a large number of happy customers as you all know today we the industry has about little over 2 crore customers i mean we have a population of over 135 crores but only 2 crores which is less than 1.5% of the population is is a customer in mutual funds uh um, our objective should be to take this number at least uh, to 8 to 10 crores over the next 4 5 years and as i said i think the mutual fund product is becoming a lot more known after whatever you know the work with sebi and amfi has been doing uh, our job is to ensure that we take it out uh, to all customers and uh, not just sell them them a product but sell them some kind of solutions uh, make not just have 10 crore customers but have 10 crore happy customers and that's where i think this whole uh team in terms of collaboration and consolidation and more importantly alignment as we if we are aligned i am sure we all as an industry will really uh, you know uh, achieve 
a delight for our customers. So that's that's the one thing I wanted to start off with. I'm very happy that IFA Galaxy is doing a conference where the theme is essentially about uh, the customer. And if we are all aligned, we will really uh, move a lot forward. Now let me come to why, uh, to the topic which was you know, uh, given to me, which is investing in a VUCA world. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure some of you may have heard about this. Uh, no volatility, uncertainty, and complexity and ambiguity. I don't want to confuse the issues. I think all of you can read it on the net what each of these things really mean. But essentially, all in all, it says is that it's kind of a crazy world outside. Now, linking it to our approach or our objective, if I were to say, of creating a good solution for our customers. Now, is this something which is to be kept in mind? And my thesis, and that's been Access's thinking over the last three to four years, that this is something which certainly is required for each and every one of our investors. And I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on it. Sometimes people also think that these are things which are relevant for more uh, high net worth clients, people who've already done the basic investing. And so it is seen as some kind of a graduation. So if you have some amount of money, basic let's put it in here uh, and then when you have more money then we will see something and see whether we should diversify out and look at global markets in some way of addressing the challenges which come from a VUCA uh, world which is a volatile uncertain crazy world and the reality is essentially this uh, the reality is that things are changing now Many of you would know that my background is that we has been that of an equity fund manager. I think for 22, 23 years of my career, I basically invested in Indian equities. And I always thought that that's the asset class to be in. And mind you, that is what I still believe. But over the last maybe eight to 10 years, uh, seven, eight years, certainly, after the global financial crisis, and more importantly, middle of the last decade, we have seen a convergence happening globally, and that is a convergence of disruption, the convergence of uncertainty and complexity. The world is becoming a more homogeneous uh, place. Uh, the uh, and along with that, uh, the initial thought which I had for a large part of my career that India is the fastest growing economy or one of the fastest growing economy, and the opportunities are humongous. I think that still continues. But that assumption that India will always have much better opportunities, which is what I used to think large part of my investing career, I think that does not hold true anymore. Now, make no mistake, I'm not saying that Indian equities is not the right place to be. All I'm saying is there are two additional things which we need to contend with, that some of the great growth stories are happening outside of India and which we do not have access uh, two, if we are just going to be limiting ourselves to investing in India, that is one. Number two, the number of great Indian growth stories is also coming down over the period. And the reason is not far to see, uh, not very difficult to see. One is large number, amount of disruption coming from technology and disruption coming from ease of availability of capital. Today, if you can get a good team and you can uh, private equity and other investors money is relatively easily available if you can get in give them enough capital this team can go out and disrupt any business however well established it may be and that is leading to some of our not so strong uh, businesses actually becoming weaker and we have seen it in the kind of performance the stock performance and the company performance which they have done over the last 10 years Essentially, we believe that they are not more than 10% of listed stocks, which are strong businesses, which will, I mean, most many of these companies will survive, but basically will, will thrive even after five years or so. And that list continues to shrink. So while we do have some additions in terms of new companies and new IPOs happening, but overall that list is has been uh, shrinking. Ten years back when Axis started its business, we thought there were about 350 of them. Today, we are somewhere maybe about 200 to 250 of such such businesses. So that is one. 
that is one that the overall number of great businesses which will generate wealth for customers that itself is coming down uh, and because there is a scarcity of these businesses these businesses are at uh, i won't say very expensively valued but yeah i mean there are reasonably valued and some of them may be running at high pe's uh, leading to some kind of a short term risk though long term obviously the wealth creation journey will still continue the other part i mentioned was on the global side now india is just 3% of the world uh, global market caps and in fact just three companies if you were uh, were to look at apple amazon and microsoft they're probably bigger than the entire india's market capitalization so in an era where that 3% was growing much much faster than the rest of the world we could afford to ignore the 97% today i don't think that is the situation in fact some of the markets are probably doing even better than here now another trend which we are seeing and why that trend should not come to india is how investors have behaved now there is one thing what is happening in markets the other thing is how investors have behaved over a period of time as markets have become more sophisticated as advice has become more sophisticated even in the largest of markets so for example if we look at the us investor the us investor has also moved about 20% of his assets globally in fact if one were to look at most markets where uh, uh, in asia as well people have anything from 30% to 45% of their investments outside of what we call home market now in india indians investing in india is 99% of their wealth 1% probably even less than that is global which has worked well in the past uh, not so well maybe in the last few three years but has worked well over the last if i were to say 30 years or so but things are changing and as people find that there is all there are opportunities globally which we are now finding it is important that we take our investors money and give them allocation to uh, global markets coming to the issue about when is the right time uh, and that is where i think risk and risk mitigation and approach to uh, you know uh, to provide an investors a reasonably smooth ride that becomes important so whether the uh, issue is about uh, it's not an issue about whether uh, there is a uh, there is a 1 lakh or 2 lakh rupee a net worth investor or a 5 lakh rupee or a 5 crore rupee i think volatility hits hits everybody um, the whole buka world is essentially saying that even with the best of analysis the uncertainty and the ambiguity is just there you cannot even with the best of analysis you cannot surmount that you need to diversify you need to because we just don't know how the future will uh, will re really uh, work out how many of us really knew that corona will come and how many of us knew that even after corona the markets will behave the way they have behaved and hence there is value to uh, diversification uh, without going into the math uh, i mean there are enough studies which have been done i mean 30 to 35% of portfolios uh, if they are in uncorrelated markets uh, local 67 65 to 70% and 30% global that some kind of an optimum number to begin with uh, from an investor's perspective now uh, so that's what is essential on one side is lack of opportunity in india uh, in some sense at the valuations lot of opportunities globally it's a one connected world you can start your business anywhere and uh, take your business anywhere uh, using the internet and third from a risk perspective in a in an uncertain world if you are very confident that indian companies will continue to do 20% next five years obviously there is no reason to go out but i think there is uncertainty there are lots of things which are uh, putting markets uh, making markets behave uh, very very differently as as compared to the past and hence there is comfort in in diversity but how do we do this now uh, again taking all this conversation to an investor may not be right so it has to be kind of built in into a consolidated solution which we will offer and i think there are a number of solutions which are coming out how to build portfolios for customers some are 
uh, products which are standalone international products and feeders and there are some products which are combinations to start with an initial uh, allocation can happen through a consolidated portfolio 70 percent of indian equities and 30 percent of global and that gives reasonable amount of diversification and risk control so i think uh, all i wanted to urge you was that look at it from a customer's perspective we need to, as an industry, align with his requirements and, more importantly, give him the right solutions rather than just pitching a number of products. And I'm sure each of those individual products will have some value, but overall may not be the right solution. So a consolidated solution is what we need to, uh, to give to our uh, customers. And I'm really banking on each one of you to take this initiative and do the right thing for our investors, which I'm sure all of you are already doing. Uh, and so that we as an industry really grow from our current level and have a large number of uh, really truly happy investors who will have the right solutions, right products in their portfolio and will have adequate diversification uh, to manage and control risk. Thank you very much and wish you all the very best and uh, uh, have I wish you all you know, all success uh, in uh, one understanding uh, your clients' aspirations and in meeting their aspirations. And that will all take the mutual fund industry uh, really forward. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you so much for demystifying those most feared four letter word VUCA. In fact, now we can confidently know how to manage volatility and sail through uncertain times. Thank you so much, Mr. Chandresh Nigam for this fantastic presentation.